name is Lois Goldterman, and I am doing a presentation on medullary sun disorder. Introduction. What is medullary sun kidney disorder? Also, the abbreviated MSK. MSK is a condition affecting the proper working order of the kidney. It happens during the development of the fetus. Doctors do not know why this happens. Small fluid filled cysts or sacs are formed on or in the tubules and ducts within the medulla. This creates a sponge-like appearance, hence where the name comes from. The kidneys are responsible for reabsorption of substances such as glucose and water that go back into the blood for other uses. It is also responsible for filtration, which elimin eliminates toxins such as ammonia and drugs. As a result, urine is produced and prepared to eliminate. The proper flow of fluid through the urinary system is important for the normal function of the kidney. This flow is hindered by the cyst or sac, which can block or slow down movement of fluids. Where does it occur and what is affected? The kidneys are located in both the right and left hypochondriac and lumbar regions of the abdominal cavity. They are part of the urinary system that includes two ureters, the renal bladder, and the renal urethra, which MSK affects the normal functioning of. The kidneys look like beans and have a concave section where the renal hilum acts as an entry for the renal arteries, the renal veins, and the urethra, where blood flows through. The urinary system also has the renal artery and the renal vein. Inside the kidneys is the medulla, and surrounding the kidneys are connective tissues called adipose, and the renal cortex that form a protective shell. Within the medulla are masses of tissue that form a pyramid-shaped section creating a cone-shaped interior. A major function of the medulla is the many thin, elongated tubules that intervene with the arteries and veins, which at the point of the connection of these are nephrons, and there are millions of these nephrons, and they help regulate water and substances like sodium salt by filtering the blood and reabsorbing what is needed and releasing waste, which is not needed. The renal corpuscle and renal tubule make up these nephrons that also act as a filter system. Located at the beginning of the nephron is the glomulus, which is surrounded by the glomular capsule, also known as Bowman capsule. Protecting the glomular capsule is a double layer of simple cells known as autocytes, which help filter blood passing through the glomerulus. Inside the glomerulus are hairy like vessels called capillaries that also help filter blood that is emptied into the capsule for storage. From there, unwanted waste are passed into the proximal tubule. At the distal end of the glomerular capsule is the opening of the renal tubule that leads away from the glomerulus. At this point, cells help pass back protein and water back into the body through the renal vein. After this, the flow of urine continues through the renal medulla and into the renal pelvis also called a calyx. From the calyx, the urine passes into the renal pelvis 
to act as a funnel for the yarn to flow into the yeast ureter and then into the bladder. Finally, the urine passes through the urethra, urethra, which is where the urine will exit the body. Symptoms of MSK. Typically, MSK can go unnoticed without any major problems. However, symptoms can occur because of other underlying problems that are caused by MSK. Having frequent urinal tract infections or UTIs, kidney stones, or hematuria, which is blood in the urine, are indications a person may have MSK. Symptoms for these conditions can coexist, which include pain in the lower back, abdomen or groin, burning or painful urination, cloudy, dark or bloody urine, foul smelling urine, fever, chill, or vomiting. As you can see, I have pictures here of the conditions affecting the medullary sponge kidney. We have a picture with kidney stones, a little white packets in there, and then a picture of the bacteria that gets caught up in the ureter, leading to the kidneys, or leading to the bladder, that can cause UTIs. Diagnosis for UTI, hematuria, and kidney stones a sample of urine is taken and sent to the lab for testing. If bacteria or blood is found in the urine, then antibiotics will be prescribed and should kill the bacteria. If the antibiotics do not work, then the patient will be referred to a urologist who specializes in the urinary system. An intravenous pylogram or IVP may be done, which is an x-ray examination of the urinary system that uses iodinated contrast material, or iodine dye, that is injected into the vein. The IDP will show the cause of the underlying, underlying problem. The most common problems of BPIs are with kidney stones that are formed from a high concentration of minerals in the urine, which builds up over time. Calcium crystallized stones connected by proteins are the most common type of kidney stones. Typically, signs of problems will be known quickly, especially if the contrast material is slow in reaching the kidney. If the kidneys look swollen, it may be from urine building up because of the stone blocking the flow. Blood in the urine will require an ultrasound or computed tomography intravenous pylogram, also known as CT IVP. This x-ray will show cysts in the kidney looking like clusters of light. Treatment of UCI premature and kidney stones. Antibiotics such as cyclofloxin or levofloxate vaccine are prescribed for UTIs and hematuria, which can be the underlying reasons for UTIs and kidney stones. Treating kidney stones may require one of several treatment options depending on the size of the stone. Microscopic or smaller sized stones may pass through the urinary tract with no complications. Larger stones can be removed using a less invasive procedure called shock wave lithotripsy. This occurs when the patient is anesthetized and lying securely on a table. It involves the use of sound waves aimed at the affected area to break up the stone into sand-like particles that can pass through the urinary tract with the urine. Another procedure is by using an optical urethroscope, which is a small tube-like instrument that is inserted through the 
and if he dies, patient, opening of the urethra and passes through the bladder into the ureter. Once the stone is visible, an acoustic shaft ray is used to break up the stone. If that does not work, the instrument can attach to the stone and retrieve it from the area. Still, another procedure called percussionist nephrolithotomy that uses a nephroscope, which is a thin wire used for viewing the kidney to remove the stone. After the patient receives anesthesia, the wire is inserted directly into the kidney through the back. Once the stone is located, it is removed. Additionally, a person who has a high concentration of calcium stones can be prescribed potassium citrate or thiazide to reduce the calcium in urine. Diet changes can help the prevention of UTI and kidney stones. Reducing sodium intake, which increases the excretion of calcium into the urine, is important. Also, reducing the amount of food, such as fish, eggs, meat, that can add to the uric acid and calcium-forming stones is equally important. The most common and important way to prevent complications is by drinking plenty of water to keep the flow of fluid passing through the urinary system without much time to form bacteria or kidney stones. It is recommended to drink at least two and a half quarts of water each day. Conclusion MSK rarely will lead to serious conditions such as kidney disease or kidney failure. However, MSK is a predisposed condition that can lead to several temporary annoying conditions. Fortunately, these consequences are treatable and preventable through simple medication and by taking and by making dietary changes.